reliable, economical and eco-friendly supply of energy is a must to achieve the socio-economic growth of a country. India's per capita electricity consumption is a mere one-sixth of the world average. Our country has therefore to increase its installed capacity at a rapid pace. With dwindling fossil fuel resources and increasing concern about the environment, nuclear energy offers a clean, economical and safe source of energy for long-term sustainable development. We all know that uranium is a powerful source of energy. In nuclear fission, an enormous amount of energy is released from a small mass of uranium which is used to generate steam to drive turbines. Our uranium reserves of about 78,000 tons have a total potential of about half a million gigawatt years. With the colossal research and development efforts by our scientists and their experience in building and operating nuclear power plants, the Indian nuclear industry today has reached a high level of maturity. It is geared up now to accept any challenges of the future. The present installed capacity of our nuclear power generation is 2,720 megawatts, which amounts to about 2.7% of the total installed capacity. It is planned that by the year 2020, the installed capacity of nuclear power plants in the country will be around 20,000 megawatts. Besides power reactors, the Department of Atomic Energy also has research reactors. There are various utilities of research reactors, including the production of radioisotopes. In the field of healthcare, radioisotopes have both diagnostic as well as therapeutic applications. Radiation cures a number of dreaded diseases including cancer. It is also employed for sterilization of a variety of medical products. In the field of agriculture, radiation has been employed for developing mutant seeds with advantages like increased crop yield, resistance to disease and reduced harvest period. Radiation processing has also been used for enhancing shelf life and disinfecting a variety of food products. The radiation techniques are also playing an important role in industry and in water management. Thus, the whole atomic energy program is based on uranium. Soon after independence, the search for uranium began. The Atomic Minerals Directorate for Exploration and Research, AMD, took up the challenge. It was April 1951. Uranium was first discovered in a place called Jadugura. This opened up new vistas for acquiring self-reliance in nuclear energy. The area is situated within a rich mineralized belt called the Singhbhum Shear Zone in the state of Jharkhand, a veritable treasure house of several economic minerals like copper, silver, gold, uranium, nickel, molybdenum and so many more. Hello! I am in the heart of Singhbhum Shear Zone which is famous for many economic minerals. There are many rich deposits of copper around me. In fact, I am sitting on a very rich copper mine which was known to the people, inhabitants of this place, around 200 years back. Subarnareka. Legend has it that this serene river once carried gold down its course. From the beginning of time, this river and the hills and dales around it have nurtured numerous aboriginal tribes like the Santhals, Kurmis, Kharias, and many more.
Isolation and ignorance had kept these communities under a shroud of darkness and deprivation. Today, this region is India's richest and most promising uranium province, meeting the total uranium requirements of the country. In October 1967, the Uranium Corporation of India Limited, USIL, was formed to mine and process uranium ore. The USIL, with its headquarters at Jadugura, made a humble beginning with one underground uranium mine at Jadugura and a processing plant near the mine site. Subsequently, two other mines, Bhatin and Narwapahar, were also opened up for meeting the expanding demand for uranium. At Jadugura, the entry to the mine is through a vertical shaft, which goes down to a depth of 640 meters. The uranium ore body at Jadugura extends like thin veins from the surface up to a depth of 900 meters, perhaps even beyond. Hundreds of miners enter the Jadugura mine through this shaft every day. They are equipped with the most modern safety appliances. We are now in a fascinating world. The operation begins with the marking of the ore body by handheld geophysical instruments followed by drilling in the desired area and pattern, blasting and subsequently loading of ore into the mine car. The cars hauled by locomotives transfer the ore into the ore pass. Ore gravitates to an underground jaw crusher. It is crushed and finally hoisted from 605 meters depth through an automated skip loading system to the surface for milling. Every mining activity at all stages undergoes radiological monitoring in addition to dust and noise monitoring. The Jadaguda mine is now being deepened up to a depth of 905 meters by sinking an underground vertical shaft. Yusil's Jadaguda mine has always undertaken need-based upgradation of technology. Various new technologies and modern equipment like the Alimac raised climber for raised development, electrohydraulic jumbo drilling, rock breaking by rock breaker and so on have been introduced as substitutes to reduce the stress of laborious mining operations. About three kilometers away from Jadugura mine, another underground mine of the Yusil, the Bhatin mine, has been in operation since 1983. Entry to this mine is through a horizontal tunnel called Adit. It is a small mine developed only up to a depth of 200 meters. 12 kilometers away from Jadugura, Yusil has set up another underground mine at Narwapahar. This is one of the most modern mines of the country with a very high level of mechanization. A 355 meter deep shaft equipped with cage and skip movement facility with an underground communication network and paging system permits the entry of employees to seven different working levels at different depths. A seven degree gradient approach into the mine called decline permits large trackless equipment to go deep inside the mine and provides ample opportunity for further mechanization of all the mining operations. Tire mounted passenger carriers carry people deep inside the mine. Such a facility is being used for the first time in our country. The electrical signaling system, designed in-house, is also unique. The electrohydraulic drill jumbo for drilling permits the operator to remain at a sufficiently safe distance.
it also makes drilling very smooth and fast. The LHD, load hole dump, is used for removal of broken rock. This allows large amounts of broken rock to be cleared in a very short time. The low profile dump truck, LPDT, brings about 15 tons of rock to the surface at a time. The scissor lift is used for roof bolting, providing access to a very high roof. The loop truck permits fueling of vehicles underground. The mine also has a large underground pump house, a well-designed power distribution system, an underground maintenance bay, a split-type ventilation technique with large fans on the surface at the outlet, as well as a mine water storage tank at the surface level. All these are unparalleled features in the mining industry. The ore, transported from underground by low-profile dump trucks, undergoes assaying by an automated bulk assaying system before being dispatched to the Jadaguda mill for processing. The Narvapahar uranium mine has the distinction of being the only completely trackless underground mine ever to be designed in India. Apart from high productivity, it has ensured full mechanization of all strenuous mining operations, thereby reducing the stress on miners' health and improvement in safety standards. These unique features have won for the mine several national safety awards year after year. The Narvapahar mine has in fact set a new benchmark for the underground mining practices in the country. The ore received from Jadugura, Bhatin and Narva Pahar mines are treated at the Jadugura mill. The ore lumps undergo three stages of crushing by jaw crusher and cone crusher in a closed circuit with a screen. After screening, the 25 mm size ore are taken for wet grinding, first by rod mill and subsequently by classifier. The classified overflow are dewatered in thickeners. The thickened slurry is treated in controlled conditions with sulfuric acid in a series of pachukas. This is called leaching. The processing plant of Usil has the highest leaching percentage, that is 96%, as compared to any other ore processing in India. The leached slurry now contains uranium in the soluble form, which is separated from undissolved material by filtration. The uranium solution is then further purified and concentrated in the iron exchange unit. Subsequent processing brings out the final product as magnesium diurinate or yellow cake. The solid yellow cake is then separated by filtration and dried in the spray dryer and packed in drums in an enclosed area. The yellow cake so produced is sent to the nuclear fuel complex at Hyderabad for further processing into nuclear fuel grade uranium. The uranium solution and slurry in the plant are transported through pumps and a network of pipelines. Tanks are well covered to take care of mist and fumes. Ventilation is maintained through fans and suitable ductings. The hallmark of milling operations at Jadugura is the automated process control system at all stages of operations. This leads to improved uranium recovery with better environmental control measures. During the milling process, two types of wastes are generated. First, liquor depleted in uranium and second, filtered solids depleted in uranium. The slurry is neutralized for the precipitation of remaining radionuclides and heavy metals like iron, manganese and so on. The neutralized slurry is classified. Coarse fractions, which account for about 50% of the waste, 
are sent to mines for backfilling the voids. The remaining fine particles are sent through pipelines to a well-engineered containment called the tailings pond. These tailings contain traces of both unrecovered uranium as well as daughter elements of uranium since our uranium ore contains only about 0.06% uranium which is one of the lowest in the world. The tailings are further depleted in uranium. The pond is bound by high hills on three sides and an earthen dam on the other side. The decantation wells are strategically placed in the tailings pond through which decanted water flows out and the fine particles settle in the bund area over a period of time. The entire decanted water is collected through a network of drains and taken for further treatment. The ponds are covered with special non-grazing varieties of grass like Kash, Katail and Amri, which consolidate the tailings and arrest the generation of dust. The tailings pond area is a protected area fenced in from all sides. The decanted water of the tailings pond and the discharge of all the three mines are collected in a water reclamation system called the effluent treatment plant. The mine water is clarified and reused in the processing plant. Part of the tailings pond water is also reused in the processing plant. The remaining part of this water is further treated with barium chloride and lime. After subsequent clarification and monitoring, this water is discharged into the environment. The solid precipitate of this system is sent back to the tailings pond. The health physics units of the Bhabha Atomic Research Center located at Jadugura and Narva Pahar are engaged in continuous monitoring of the mining and milling activities of USIL with the state-of-the-art equipment manned by a team of scientists. Water and air at strategic activity zones are monitored from the radiological point of view. Radiation exposure levels are checked and kept well within permissible limits. The mine and mill workers also undergo various routine checks at these centers. The Environmental Survey Laboratory of the Jadugura unit extends its monitoring activities covering about 25 kilometers around Jadugura. Regular collection of water samples from the stream, groundwater from wells and tube wells, samples of soils, grass, vegetables and foodstuffs are collected and rigorously monitored for levels of radioactivity and chemical constituents. Gamma radiation and environmental radon are also continuously monitored. Thermoluminescent dosimeters are placed at different localities around Jadugura to evaluate the natural background environmental gamma radiation. In all its operations, USIL adheres to the guidelines laid down by the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, AERB, of India. There has been some concern about the background radiation in Jadugura and its effects on the health of the people. The Department of Atomic Energy has, however, been regularly monitoring the background radiation in Jadugura. Studies have been carried out on the effects of low and high radiation levels on the health of the people. The average background radiation in and around Jadugura is 10 to 15 microrem per hour, which corresponds to about 1.1 millisievert per year and is comparable with the general background radiation levels observed in the East Singbhum district. The limit of radiation exposure for the general public as prescribed by AERB is 1 millisievert per year over and above the natural background radiation. The Department of Atomic Energy in all its operations while adhering to these limits strives to minimize the radiation exposure to as low as reasonably achievable, ALARA.
As part of its health safety program, USIL carries out regular medical examinations of its personnel. A medical survey of the population within a two-kilometer radius around Jadugura was also conducted. The team consisted of doctors of the Bhaba Atomic Research Center, USIL, the Tata Medical Hospital Jamshedpur and representatives of the Bihar government including civil surgeons of the East Singhbhum district. This team unanimously concluded that the disease pattern observed in this area cannot be ascribed to radiation exposure. This fact has been further corroborated during September 2001 by an independent team of doctors. In the state of Kerala, the Karunagapalli Taluk has the highest natural background radiation compared to any other place in India. The radiation level varies from 1.15 to 35 millisievert per year. Researchers from Bhaba Atomic Research Center and the Directorate of Health Services, Kerala, have conducted a detailed scientific study on newborn children in the low and high background radiation areas of Kerala, where significant population density has existed for generations. In the recent report which we have published on this particular study, we have said conclusively that there is no increase in cancer risk as a result of the background radiation which exists in the Karnavapalli Taluk. Another study was conducted to compare the occurrence of genetic defects in newborn children in the low and high background radiation areas of Kerala. It was found that there is no remarkable difference in any of the reproductive factors such as congenital malformation, stillbirths or twinning between the two groups of newborns. The frequency of malformation in the total live births examined from this area are found to be comparable to that in Mumbai, Chennai, Baroda and New Delhi. CARE, one of the largest international development organizations, has been working in Jadugura and surrounding villages in the field of women and child health care. Sainath Banerjee, the project coordinator of CARE, narrates his experience. We started this project, this child cell project in this area, Patamda and Portka, which are catering 262 villages. The primary interventions which we are offering to the peoples are uh, ANC and safe delivery, then infant feeding, immunization and spacing. He is sure that the disease pattern found in this area does not have any anomalies. The common diseases are, are like malaria, the small nutrition, then skin disease, then uh, those uh, common fever and uh, other associated factors. Congenital deformities and anomalies are well, not very common in this area. The congenital malformations are known to occur the world over amongst unexposed populations too. The frequency of their occurrence depends on several factors like maternal age, consanguinity, ethnicity, nutritional status and so on. A French geologist who is conducting research on the Singbhum Shia zone has visited many villages. He has not found any anomalous health problems in the region. We come from France, hydrogeologist. I'm concerned by the functioning and the behavior of the aquifer. I visited about 60, 60 villages within a week. I can say that the, the health of people has no anomaly. Doesn't show any anomaly. A small number of people displaced due to the USIL project have been provided with land and compensation. The organization has given employment to every adult of the relocated families. USIL has not only paid for building houses, but also arranged for land. This land has been leveled 
and tube wells with hand pumps have been provided. Besides engineering and technical achievements, USIL has been instrumental in extending many other facilities as a result of the trickling effect of development to the entire Jadaguda region, giving it a new lease of life. This has had a positive socio-economic impact on the lives of the people. Besides generating employment, USIL has provided housing, potable water, better means of communication and transportation, leading to the development of the local market. USIL provides employment to around 5,000 people, the majority of whom are tribals from Jadugura and its surrounding areas. Apart from all this, well-equipped school... My name is Sarati Murmu. I come from Gadmat Gram. I study here in 10 classes. I have been in my village. फाइव क्लास तक पढ़े जिसका जिस स्कूल का नाम है हितकू प्राइमरी स्कूल मेरा दो भाई हैं वो भी एटॉमिक एनर्जी सेंटर स्कूल में पढ़ रहे हैं मैं साइकिल से आती हूँ मेरे गांव के आसपास कोई भी सेकेंडरी स्कूल नहीं है मैं स्कूल में अच्छा शिक्षा ग्रहण करने के लिए आते हूँ और देश के लिए एक अच्छा नागरिक बनना चाहती हूँ वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स are changing the face of the new generation of tribals. USIL has a large hospital to cater to the everyday needs of the people. A displaced tribal of Jadugura says he has been resettled and offered employment. Now there is a school for his children, hospital facilities and a better home. Thanks to USIL's socio-economic upliftment of the tribals. Today, the entire area is lush and green. A barrage for drinking water has been constructed with a water treatment plant. A bridge constructed on the barrage helps the locals to commute between the Rakhamines railway station and Jadugura. The Department of Atomic Energy has always laid great emphasis on health, safety and the environment. It would be definitely possible for us to exploit our uranium and also vast thorium resources and solve the long-term energy problems in our country. For the long-term sustainability of the country's economic growth, nuclear power is an inevitable choice. Come, meet the tribal children at Jadugura, the children of Yusil's workforce. Today, they glow with health and high spirits. They look ahead to a bright future. Come, let us extend a hand and help them step out of the clutches of poverty and ignorance. Let us help transform their dreams into a reality we can all be proud of. Come, let us believe what we see.